So the last portion of this chapter deals with creating a trial balance. Now a trial balance is a list of all the accounts and their balances on a particular date showing that totals debit equal total credits. Another purpose of the trial balance is to help us in preparing adjusting entries for various internal transactions that we'll get to in Chapter 3. Now, since the trial balance isn't a published financial statement that's going to be used by any external parties, there's no required order for listing any of the accounts in the trial balance. It's only used in the accounting department for internal purposes and provides a check on the equality of the debits versus the credits. Um, most companies list the accounts in the order of assets, then liabilities, then stockholders equity, dividends, revenues, and then expenses. That's generally how the order of the trial balance is issued or, or created. Now, we're going to take the account balances from the general ledger that we've worked on with Eagle Company so we can prepare a balance of the Eagle Golf Academy. Now we're listing the balance of the debit accounts in the debit column and the balances of the credit accounts in the credit column. Notice that the total of the balances in the debit column are going to equal the total of the balances in the credit column because remember how our balances, our accounting equation is always accurate. Our assets equal our liabilities plus our owner's equity, so we're always going to balance. Which of the following accounts would appear in the credit column of a trial balance? Now we know the normal balance of credit accounts would be liabilities and owner's equity. So prepaid rent is an asset. That would have a normal debit balance. Dividends have a normal debit balance. And salaries expense has a normal debit balance. So the only credit column would be common stock. The trial balance is a listing of all accounts and their balances on a given date. The only account listed above that would have a credit balance would be the common stock account. It's an equity account and equity accounts are increased by credits. So guys, there you have it with um, this chapter. What I'm going to do now is create um, some various exercises that we will go through to help you better understand this chapter. So we're going to go through some problems that are in the back of the chapter to help you gain some understanding on the various um, um, objectives that we've covered. <clears throat> We're going to start with exercise 2-2. <clears throat> and basically here, we've got some external transactions and um, we're going to um, discuss that um, what's going to happen with the accounting equation. So we're going to analyze each of these transactions and then under each category in the accounting equation we're going to um, talk about what part of the transaction increases, what decreases, and what has no effect. So in the first example we issue co common stock in exchange for cash. Well this is similar to the example we had in the lecture. Um, when we issue common stock, what happens to the company? The company receives cash. Cash increases. Also, common stock increases, which is a part of the stockholders equity section. So as you see here, our assets increase and our stockholders equity increases and there as you can see our uh, equation balances. The next one we purchase equipment by signing a note payable. So what this means is we didn't purchase equipment with cash we purchased equipment and took out a loan or a note on the equipment. So equipment is an account that is an asset balance 
when we purchase equipment, our asset increases, which means we debit the account. And by signing a note payable, that account note payable is a liability. And to increase a note payable, our liabilities increase. So as you see there, our assets increase and our liabilities increase, which means our equation is in balance. Next, we provide services to customer on account. Now, as you can see there, providing services to customers on account doesn't mean we receive the cash. It means we are going to get the cash in the future. And so in this example, we're going to have an account called accounts receivable, which is an asset that will increase. We will also have a revenue account, which is part of our stockholders equity that increases in our expanded accounting equation. So our assets for the account accounts receivable will increase. Our stockholders equity section will increase. Again, we still balance. Next, we pay rent for the current month. Well, think about that. When we pay rent, we use cash. So cash is an asset, it's going to decrease. Then when we pay rent, the account would be a rent expense account. That decreases our stockholders' equity. That's less money to give to the shareholders. It decreases our stockholders' equity. So as you can see, our total assets decreased and our total stockholders' equity decreased. Again, we balance. Next. We pay insurance for the current month. Now it's going to be just like that previous example where when we pay insurance, we use cash, which is an asset. And since we're decreasing cash, we're going to credit it. Then we have the other account will be insurance expense that decreases our stockholders equity. So you see again, it's in balance. Our assets decrease and our stockholders equity also decreases. Then our last one here is we collect cash from customers on account. Now think about this one. What are the accounts affected? Cash and accounts receivable. Now cash is going to increase, but since we're collecting cash on account, our cash increases and our accounts receivable decrease. Both are assets. We're going to increase our cash, decrease our accounts receivable. Our total assets are going to remain the same. Therefore, we don't have any effect on our accounting equation. One asset goes up, one asset goes down, but ultimately it's all going to stay the same. So there won't be an effect on our accounting equation but one specific asset called accounts receivable is reduced. Another asset called cash is increased. <clears throat> Next, <laughs> let's look at ex uh, exercise 2-4. Now 2-4 is with these transactions, we're going to, excuse me, with each transaction describe the dual effect um, on the accounting equation. For example, for the first transaction, well, we'll look and see exactly how this works. So here are the various transactions we're going to look at, and we're going to see both sides of this transaction and see which accounts are affected. So the first one is uh, Boilermaker House Painting Company incurs the following transactions for September. It paints houses in the current month for $15,000 on account. So this company makes revenues by providing a service painting homes. So it paints houses on account. So that tells us there it's not cash it received, it's on account, which means to me that it's created an accounts receivable. So we have an account receivable that increased. And in addition, our revenues increased. So our stockholders equity section
has increased and our accounts receivable which is an asset has also increased. Next, we purchase painting equipment for $16,000 in cash. What happens here? Well, we used cash to purchase the equipment. So our cash we know is going to decrease, but what's going to increase here? Well, our equipment increases. So our equipment, which is an asset, increases by 16,000. And our cash, which is how we paid for it, decreases, which is also an asset for 16,000. Now again, recognize that the total assets didn't change, but specific accounts within the assets were altered. Next, we purchase office supplies on account for 2,500. So that means we didn't pay cash for them yet, but we will be paying cash in the future. So office supplies include an asset, and we owe money now to a creditor, a supplier. So we have an accounts payable that increased or a liability that increased, and our asset called supplies also increased. So our total assets overall increased, and our total liabilities overall increased. So do you see how the assets still equal the liabilities plus the stockholders' equity? Now we paid employee salaries of 3200 for the month. What accounts are affected here? Cash is being used to pay the salary, so cash gets decreased, and the expense stockholders equity the salaries expense account stockholders equity um, will be decreased so our cash gets decreased and our stockholders equity is decreased now we have purchased advertising to appear in the current month of twelve hundred dollars it's going to be very similar to the previous example our cash decreases and the stockholders equity section will also decrease. Remember, expenses decrease our retained earnings, which ultimately is part of stockholders' equity, because it's less money for the shareholders. Now we pay office rent of 4400 for the current month. This is not like the example previously, where we paid a year's worth of rent in advance. No, this is just paying one month. So this will be an expense. Our rent expense decreases our stockholders' equity, and we use cash to pay for that rent. So our assets also will be decreased by the same amount. Then we receive cash of $5,000 in advance from a customer who plans to have his house painted in the following month. Okay, so we're getting cash before we provide the service. Now we've talked about this in our previous lecture. When we receive cash prior to completing a service, our cash increases, but we also have a liability. Our deferred revenues, or we can call it unearned revenues, increase, which means we owe that customer something. So we show that money as an asset increase, and we show the other part of the equation as a liability or a deferred revenue until we perform that job. So <clears throat> We're going to now look at this next exercise, 2-6, and we've got some common accounts. And we are going to look at each one of these accounts and decide what's the normal balance. <clears throat> Is it a normal debit balance, which means it's on the left-hand side of the equation? Or is it a credit balance, which means it's on the right-hand side of the occasion, uh, equation? So remember, Assets, expenses, and dividends always have a normal debit balance. 
liabilities, revenues, and stockholders equity have a normal credit balance. So if we look at each one of these and know what type of account it is, we can just automatically know the normal balance. Cash is an asset. It has a normal debit balance, which means for cash to increase, we debit it. Service revenue is a revenue account. Revenue accounts have a normal credit balance, which means we credit it to increase it. Salaries expense has a normal debit balance, so we increase expenses by debiting them. Accounts payable is a liability. It has a normal credit balance. Equipment is an asset, debit. Retained earnings is on the right-hand side of that accounting equation. It has a normal credit balance. Utility expense is an expense, debit. Accounts receivable is an asset, a debit balance. Dividends, remember when we pay out dividends, dividends increase by a debit. Another way I look at that is we need cash to pay dividends. What happens to cash when we pay dividends? Cash decreases, which means we credit cash. Therefore, whatever we do has to be a debit. Common stock is a normal credit balance. I just can't emphasize enough how important it is to go over these problems again and again. Okay, now we're going to look at exercise 270. So we've got some external transactions for Hokies Company. And we're going to take these and we have various accounts Hokies uses up at the top here. Accounts payable, salaries payable, accounts receivable, cash, equipment, utilities expense, prepaid rent, supplies, service revenue, common stock, rent expense, retained earnings, notes payable, salaries expense, and dividends. We are going to use those accounts to complete these transactions. And so we are going to um, um, provide that, um, indicate which accounts should be debited and which accounts should be credited. So the example purchase equipment in exchange for cash. Well, in equipment increases. That way, reason we're going to debit equipment, which is an asset. Cash is being used, which means it's being reduced. Cash is an asset, which means we credit cash. Next, we pay a cash dividend. What happens to cash when we pay a cash dividend? Cash decreases. What's the other account that's affected when we pay a dividend? Well, dividends increase, cash decreases. Next, we pay rent in advance for the next three months. So we're not just paying the current month, we're paying it ahead of time, which gives us a future benefit, a future resource, which means prepaid rent is increased, which is an asset, and our account cash is being used up or decreasing. Next, we provide services to customers on account. Okay, guys, remember, we didn't get cash. We have this account called accounts receivable, which is a benefit we are going to have in the future. So our accounts receivable will increase. The account credited is a revenue account. That also, the credit increases that account. We purchase office supplies on account. Our supplies increase. We didn't use cash. We owe them money. So our liability increases, which is a credit. Next, we pay salaries for the current month. Well, our salaries expense is going to increase with the debit. Our cash is being used up, which decrease in an asset is a credit. Number six, we issue common stock in exchange for cash. What happens to cash? It increases. 
What happens to common stock? It also increases. To increase cash, which is an asset, we debit it. To increase stockholders' equity, which is on the right side of the accounting equation, we credit it. Number seven, we collect cash from customers for services provided in three above. Do you see up here we provided services for customers on account? Well, we're receiving this money now. So when we receive that money, cash increases, which is an asset, but the account's receivable account, which is an asset, decreases. Number eight, we borrow cash from the bank and sign a note. When we borrow money, what happens to our cash? It goes up. We also have a liability, which increases. When liabilities increase, they are credited. Then, number nine, we pay for the current month's utilities. What happens there? It's a utility expense account. To increase a utility expense, we debit it. To use cash, we're decreasing cash, which is a credit. And then lastly, in number 10, we're going to take the transaction from four where we purchased office supplies on account. Now we're going to pay that account payable off. So what happens there? We're going to use cash to pay off what we owe. Cash is going to decrease and our accounts payable will also decrease. We owed money on those supplies. We needed to pay it. When we pay what we owe, we no longer owe that amount. Therefore, we are decreasing our liability. Since liabilities normally have a credit balance, when we decrease a liability, we debit it. Okay, so exercise 2.8 is our next one here. In 2.8, we've got a Terrapin company engaging in various transactions. We're going to record the transactions and it gives us a series of accounts that this company utilizes in order to record these transactions. So Terrapin has a couple asset accounts, cash, supplies, and equipment. Now you'll say, how do I know those are assets? Well, all three of those items provide future benefits. They're resources. Cash is a resource that will help the company, aid the company in the future. Supplies also, and so is equipment. Accounts payable is a liability. It's on the right-hand side of the equation. Service revenue is part of the shareholder's equity section. It increases our shareholder sec um, equity. And our expenses, rent and salary expense, decrease our shareholder's equity section. So let's take a look at each one of these and see how we're going to complete the transactions. So the first one is purchase equipment in exchange for cash of 23400 So we know our debit and credit must be 23400 Our um, explanation is purchase equipment with cash. Now which of these two accounts are affected? Well, what goes up? What's increased? Equipment is increased and cash is decreased. As you see, both of these are assets. All we're doing is replacing one asset in exchange for another asset. Our equipment increases, our cash decreases, our total assets remain the same. Next, we provide services to customers and we receive cash of $6,800. So we're providing services for cash. We know the debit $6,800 and the credit is $6,800. What's increasing here? Well, cash is increasing. We also have service revenue. We're providing services. Our service revenues are increasing, which means our shareholders' equity or stockholders' equity section is increasing, which is a credit. Next, we pay the current month's rent of $1,300. So we know our debit and our credit will each be $1,300. What happens with a current month's rent 
and expenses increased and our cash is being decreased. When we have a rent expense, it ultimately decreases our stockholders equity account, which is what keeps it in balance. The cash decreases on the asset side and then the stockholders equity section decreases on the stockholder equity section side. Then we purchase office supplies on account for a thousand. Our supplies increase and our liability accounts payable also increase. We pay employee salaries of 2100 for the month. Our cash decreases, which means we credit it. Our salaries expense increases, which ultimately then decreases our shareholders equity section. So now with exercise 210, let's look at 210. And in here we've got a company called Sun Devil Hair Design and it has various transactions. We're going to record these transactions in um, their journal. It gives us the various accounts they use, cash, accounts receivable, and supplies. Again, they're all assets. Our accounts payable is a liability. Our service revenue increases our shareholders equity section. Our advertising expense, salaries expense, and our utilities expense are all going to decrease our shareholders equity. So the first one is pay $700 for radio advertising for February. Well, what gets increased? what gets decreased. Our advertising expense gets increased which ultimately reduces our stockholders equity section and our cash gets decreased. We then purchase beauty supplies of $1,300 on account. Well, our supplies increase which is an asset and our liability of accounts payable will also increase of 1300 On February 14th, we provide services of $2,900 to customers and we receive cash. Our cash increases, which we debit, which again means the left-hand side of the equation, and our service revenues cr are credited because it's increasing our shareholders account. Then on the 15th, we pay employee salaries for the current month of 900 bucks. Our salaries expense is increased of 900. And again, remember expenses ultimately decrease our shareholders equity section. Our cash is being decreased. So you see our asset on the left hand side our, our, of the transaction, the accounting equation is getting decreased. Our shareholders equity section is getting decreased when we pay salaries. Then we provide beauty services of $1,000 to customers on account. So what that tells me is we are due money in the future. We have an accounts receivable, excuse me, we have an accounts receivable of $1,000 that has increased and we have our service revenues of $1,000 that are also being increased. Then we pay utility bill, a utility bill in the current month for 300 bucks. An expense increases, and as I've said, when an expense increases on the expanded accounting equation, that ultimately decreases our shareholders' equity section. And our cash is being used to pay this bill, so our cash is also decreasing. Now we've got one more exercise, exercise 211, and exercise 211, Bearcat Construction starts operations and has the various transactions. Again, we've got the various accounts that we can use for Bearcat. The first one is issues common stock for 21,000. Well, when we issue common stock for 21,000, our cash is going to increase 
and our common stock, shareholders' equity, will also increase. Then on March 5th, we obtained a $9,000 loan from the bank by signing a note. What happens to our cash? It increases. Our notes payable, which is a liability, also increases. Again, cash is an asset equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Liabilities is on the right-hand side of the accounting equation. That increases by a credit. Purchase construction equipment for $25,000 cash. Our equipment increases, our cash decreases. Our total assets have not changed, but the accounts within the total assets have been altered. We purchase advertising for the current month of $1,100 cash. Our advertising expense increases, which is a debit. Our cash decreases, which is a credit. Remember, our advertising expense ultimately reduces our shareholders' equity section. On March 22nd, we provide construction services for $18,000 on account. Remember, when we don't get cash, but we will receive cash in the future, we debit an accounts receivable for $18,000, which increases our assets. We increase our service revenue, which is a portion of shareholders' equity, of a credit to record construction services on account. It's really important to make sure you write your explanation for the various transactions. On March 27th, we received 13000 cash on account from the March 22nd services. So you see this, we provided the services and we recorded those services. We didn't get cash, we showed we were going to get the cash in the future. Now some of that cash is coming in. So we receive 13000 of that money that's due us. We increase our cash by 13000 and we're going to reduce the amount we're expecting to see by 13000 because we now have that money. So our cash increases 13000 Our accounts receivable decrease by 13000 Both are assets. It doesn't change our total assets. It just increases our cash account, decreases our accounts receivable. On May 28th, we pay salaries for the current month of $6,000. So our salaries expense increases, our cash decreases. Now we're going to take some transactions from Scarlet Knight. This is exercise 212. And a junior accountant recently employed by the company proposes to record the following transactions. We have to decide if the junior accountant uh, did it correctly or not. So let's look at each one. We've got uh, five transactions here. The first one is the owners invest $15,000 in the company and receive common stock. What happens when the company receives $15,000 in cash? Cash increases. Did this junior accountant do it correctly? No. When cash increases, it's debited. Cash is an asset. Cash should increase by debiting it. Common stock, which is a shareholder's equity account, increases by crediting it. So in this scenario, the junior boy did it the opposite. Next, receives cash of $4,000 for services provided in the current period. When we receive cash, what do we do with cash? We increase it, debit it. Service revenue, revenue accounts have a normal credit balance. Credit balances are normal in shareholders' equity section, and service revenues increase shareholders' equity. So that is correct. Cash is increased, and service revenues are also increased. Next, we purchase office supplies on account. For $300. Office supplies are an asset. We received an asset. It increases an asset. Therefore, the supplies is a debit. But it says we were, uh, purchased them on account. We didn't pay cash for them. So 
cash would not be the correct account to reduce. Our job would be to record a liability. Accounts payable is a liability that is being increased when we owe money. Therefore, supplies is the asset that's increased and the liability, accounts payable, would be credited to be increased. Next, we have, we pay $600 for the next month's rent. Our rent expense is increased for $600. Expense accounts have a normal debit balance. Expenses reduce our shareholders' equity section by debiting them. The shareholders' equity section has a normal credit balance to increase them. So when we expense things, we reduce what's available to the shareholders. In paying the $600 rent expense, we use cash. So by decreasing our asset cash, we credit that account. Then we purchase office equipment with cash of $2,200. So does this look right? We use cash to purchase office equipment. Using cash would reduce cash, which should be a credit balance. But in this example, he debited cash and credited equipment. In fact, he should increase the equipment by debiting it, decrease the cash by crediting it. Okay, so finally we've got um, exercise 214, and in 214 we've got some transactions. We're going to post each of these to the cash T account and then calculate the ending balance. So we've got various transactions and we're going to take one account and create a T account. Remember the T is a standard T with a debit side which means left and a credit side which means right. The beginning balance in the cash T account is $5,000. So the first thing we're going to do is create a T account and start it with $5,000. Okay, now the next transaction is we receive cash from a customer of 15000 What happens to cash? It increases. So we debit cash for 15000 Next, we pay cash for employee salaries of nine. When we pay cash, we're reducing cash, which means we decrease it or credit cash. Next, we pay cash for rent of $3,000. Again, when we use cash, we reduce cash, we credit it. Cash is an asset with a normal balance that's a debit balance. When we increase, we debit. When we decrease, we credit. Next, we receive cash from the sale of equipment of $8,000. So we sold equipment and we received cash. What happened to our cash? It increased. When we increase cash, we debit it. Then we pay cash for utilities of $1,000. When we utilize cash, we credit it. We receive cash from a bank loan of $4,000. Is cash increasing? Or being decreased? Well, it's being increased, so we debit it on the T account. We pay cash for advertising, $7,000. We credit the $7,000 cash. We purchase supplies on account for $3,000. When we purchase supplies on account, does that affect our cash at all? No. It doesn't even involve cash. Think about it. Supplies increase by 3000 but the liability account, accounts payable, increases. Account, uh, the account cash is not affected at all. So then, in order to figure out our ending balance, we total the debit side, we total the credit side, and we subtract the credits from the debits 
to come up with an ending balance at the end of the period of cash of $12,000.